I am Captain Doyer of the United Earth Defense Force. Your vessel has violated regulation C-1922 and F-031 of the UE Charter by reaching Earth's perimeter. Leave immediately. You are not welcome here. What's up, Lore Masters? Today we're going to be analyzing Discovery, specifically the episode People of Earth. Before we get too far into the review, let me say this. I think that this episode, really the last two when I consider it, is a return to Legacy Trek. It's a breath of fresh air, in my opinion. Let's break down my assertion. Before we do though, there are some things that you have to accept. First, Star Trek Discovery Season 3 is a bit of a soft reset. You won't have the glorious Starfleet nor the Federation. The moral centers of what we're used to just don't exist. You do have the Star Trek universe in literally a state that no one has ever gone before. So you have a different era and possibly even universe from that of the original series, TNG, and DS9. Okay, cool. We can accept things being a bit different. Great. That's something that a lot of critics have said. Just say that it's different. Now, let's look at something else. Even if I did find you, I know it would be different. Because I am different. When we analyze Michael Burnham, I feel like they're doing a soft reboot of her as well. She has been through a year of hell, and so she is different. She's not who she was before. She can be more of a person, and it feels like she connects with people. While the focus on her is still there, in this episode at least, it's much, much more like an ensemble. Everyone gets a chance to breathe. So we have a strange new world with strange new individuals and a far, far more subdued Burnham. Federation vessel, surrender your dilithium immediately. Scan us. We have no dilithium on board. Looking at another aspect, let me address the plot itself. For a lot of people, they're going to try to claim that this isn't the universe Roddenberry had dreamed of. That's an uneducated standpoint that most likely came from an uneducated YouTuber who has a popular channel. When you actually research Roddenberry, it shows that he was far less progressive than people thought and was exceptionally good at taking credit for other people's ideas. If you think I'm wrong, please feel free to go do some research on him. And side note, if you liked The Wrath of Khan and Undiscovered Country, you liked something that Roddenberry hated. That said, what really was Star Trek if not Gene Roddenberry? Well, the series, the franchise, at the end of the day is a feeling. It's a type of spirit that you have. There is literally nothing in Discovery Season 1 and 2 that isn't in Legacy Trek when it comes to plot point or even action. But the way these topics are addressed and handled, and the spirit in which they were done, are totally different. To quote some of the episodes of Legacy that Roddenberry would hate, and some would say are against the spirit of what Star Trek is, we could take a look at In the Pale Moonlight, Best of Both Worlds, Year of Hell, and most episodes in the Zindi arc. Yet, the far majority of people will say that these episodes are still Legacy Trek, and even most of them are good question is why? Because at the end of the day, it's not about everyone being the good guy, everyone being the pinnacle, or there being a utopia that exists. It's about exceptional individuals that step away from the darkness and address issues. They face down evil and try to change those around them and generally do. Sometimes they become what they hate, but they ensure that the universe is better for it. It's better than when they first got there. Hey there, it may not be December yet, but that doesn't mean I can't buy a Santa suit and do some weird stuff for Jesse Gender, and then use that same Santa suit to tell you about Loot Crate. Loot Crate has been a huge supporter of this channel and fan of my work. By clicking the link below, you can go and get some of the coolest science fiction swag that they have to offer. Not only is it something that you'll enjoy and can use around the house, but it also helps the channel. So remember, click the link below because it's really weird doing this in a conference room when I know people are outside listening. So, here we have Discovery wanting to return to the capital of the Federation. So, here we have Discovery wanting to return to the capital of the Federation to heed the call of a Starfleet Admiral. They return to find that Earth has become isolationist, that those on it wish not to have anyone disturb them, and that Starfleet decided to leave. 
Now note, Starfleet did this to protect Earth. With the Federation severely weakened thanks to the burn and no real way to defend the Soul system, Starfleet officers decided to leave. That is something that is legacy Starfleet in a nutshell. They would decide to go to save others, even to their own detriment. Now with their absence, Earth had to form its own coalition, the United Defense Force. Something to note, as of right now, we have no reason to believe that this force is xenophobic. It's just isolationist. We even see some aliens as a part of the force. A lot of people are already saying that Earth hates aliens and that it's just it's a bad place and they're all racists. There is absolutely no evidence of this yet. Earth is definitely isolationist. They aren't even talking to their own colonies, and they are very, very trigger happy. They are so distrustful that they beam onto ships and search them to ensure that there's no contraband. But that doesn't mean that they hate other races, they are just scared. And I have to admit, it's an interesting and new plot arc to explore. Speaking of the plots, I'm really reticent to break these down. I will say the introduction of the new non-binary character was done exceptionally well, and the way they deal with pirates is... In fact, I like this episode so much, I don't want to spoil it, which is why I'm not getting into the nitty gritty. In the end, the Discovery crew act like Starfleet officers, and they make the universe a better place. Now, to be clear, this is straight up Andromeda. This plot is like season two Andromeda. But that said, it's well-written Andromeda. When I rated episode two of Discovery, I rated it as decent and interesting. This episode is good and hopeful. Episode two made me hopeful for episode three. Episode three makes me interested for episode four. I hope to God they keep this momentum up. But to be fair, this is Discovery that we're talking about. 